let's um, yeah so let's pray and then we'll get started right um and this morning as we pray um why don't you just ask the lord um lord just speak to me specifically um push me in the direction nudge me in the direction that you want me take want me to take in life you know god god uh, the lord has a beautiful plan purpose for each one of us and uh, the call could be unique um i mean call is unique and very different from the person uh, you know next to you so um uh, just go ahead and say god you know you nudge me in that direction push me in that direction um and uh, you know and and that's a perfect place to be right in the in the center uh, of his will uh to be in the right in the center of his will um it could be uh, you know for all the others it could be you know, why are you doing this but um but for you uh, and your family and those uh, you know connected with the vision um it is the perfect uh, place to be uh, the center of god's will so yeah um as we pray this morning uh, just go ahead and just invite god to do that work right and just say lord i surrender uh let me keep aside all my prejudices all my uh, preconceived notions god and uh, all my fears uh, all my anxieties all my shortcomings and uh, i want to look to you lord you know look to you and uh, the vision that you have the plan that you have for me um that you have written down for me even before i was formed uh in my mother even when you formed me in my mother's womb uh you wrote down that script you wrote down that narrative and uh yes god father we thank you this morning um that can we can come to your presence as we are lord um and lord we thank you that you invite us that you welcome us that you receive us lord um and uh, so you're glad to see us lord and uh it's uh, sometimes sometimes for us lord it's um, it's so uh it's so difficult to see that but lord uh with our uh with our experiences and with our filters uh but lord this morning we come to you as we are and we are glad to see you as well lord we are glad to uh um, just be in your presence collectively as a as a class and uh, lord we ask father god this morning that um, you would stir up the call oh god that you would not just uh, for those of us who have not yet started uh, lord who is who are still um, thinking and uh, and waiting and um, lord uh, and asking god i pray that it will be a nudge in that direction it will be a push in that direction i pray god that uh, i just pray for a release god a release of um, um lord uh, open heaven god uh, even uh, over us lord that that there will be a uh, a release of um, uh, a, a multitude a torrent of uh, lord communication of words lord being quickened uh, to our hearts father god and i just pray god that you will uh, just pour out your spirit of oh, father god and i just pray for the supernatural of oh, father god the dreams and visions of oh, father god there'll be a um uh, a multiplication of that father god and even as we are diligent to receive it that we'll be diligent to lord prepare ourselves as you as you move us in that direction lord and i just pray that each one of us uh, lord even as you prepare us even as you commission us lord that we will step into the fullness of the call that you have for us and uh, even as you prepare us that we will serve wherever we are whatever you've entrusted in our hands that we will be faithful and that we will serve god we uh we just want to commit this time into your mighty hands lord in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen okay um yeah, welcome to this uh this course um this is the ministry of the evangelist and the pastor and the teacher right so you will be learning about the apostolic and the prophetic the ministry of the apostle uh, apostle and the and the prophet in a separate uh, course um this uh, in this course we will look at uh, um the ministry uh, of the uh, um the evangelist the pastor and the teacher so um so if you have your notes and other notes are there in the stream you can um, download that and keep it for your reference um uh, so this course is very interesting because it deals with the call of god uh it deals with um, uh, the specifics of uh, the ministry of the uh, evangelist pastor and teacher you know uh, Uh, while uh, some of us may be specific may, may be uh, really aware of these differences and uh, um, dif uh, of these different ministry offices and the ministry gifts um 
maybe uh, some of us are you know thinking okay i i know about the past uh, but then what about the other so we we'll, uh, it'll be good to take a look at that uh, i remember you know traveling uh, to the north of india and uh, attending some meetings and so on so so everywhere everyone who uh, stepped into ministry was called a pastor you know uh, it was uh, so that was uh, you know that was something new because um, uh, they were not really pastoring a congregation or uh, otherwise maybe they had a kind of an itinerant uh, traveling ministry um they were more of an evangelist right uh, but uh, they were called pastors for uh, some reason so um so then you realize that okay you know there are distinctions and uh, uh, and we need to kind of understand that um rather than just the you know uh, what we know as the pastoral call okay so um so we go to ephesians chapter 4 and uh, which gives us an understanding uh, that's a that's the best place to go with where it lists down together the uh, these ministry gifts or these ministry offices right and um, gives us some details about it you know why they are there uh, who established who who put them there who established there and um, then there and what is the purpose uh, of these ministry offices and so on so um it's good to it's go to that place right so uh, as far as this course goes we will have uh, four quizzes uh, at the end of every month to to grade uh, and then the the total of these grades will go towards the final grade Okay, so we'll have four quizzes, and that's uh, that's it. Um, okay, so let's look at um, Ephesians four. Um, well, actually, you can read from uh, seven onwards, but specifically from verse eleven. Uh, so let me just read um, Ephesians four seven onwards. But to each of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended. what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth he also he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things okay and uh, so this is the uh, portion that we are focusing on verse 11 onwards and he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love okay so um when we go to verse 11 it uh, it, it this is how it starts it uh, starts by saying that he himself who referring to the lord because it talks about him uh, giving um, uh, giving each one of us grace according to the me- measure of, we've been given uh, each one uh, have been given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift and um, it says in verse 11 that he himself gave some Okay, that he himself gave some, and that word "gave" um, in the Greek meaning that he supplied, or he furnished, or he appointed. Um, so it's it's not just a you know question of generous giving, but also it's a quest. It's it's a it's a it's an act of uh, a serious appointment, right? Uh, appointment and commission and uh, bestowing, right? So uh, it refers to that. So he gave some. Um, so want to call your attention to draw your attention to the word some also so it's not all uh, but it's some right so he gave some to be apostles prophets evangelists pastors teachers okay, so let's look at each one of them just uh, you know just a overview and before we uh, proceed further so we see um, apostle 
and uh, and the word of course uh, i i really didn't know about this term uh, before i started serving in church and uh, i remember having a conversation with someone and someone said i have an apostolic calling and uh, i was like what is that so yeah so apostle so the word there i just put it in the chat uh, is apostolos which means uh, a sent out one a delegate the one who is a messenger who sent out with specific orders right and it is actually um, uh, a military term which uh, which paul uses because uh, um, the romans when they conquered they would send out these uh, you know uh, apostolos or um, uh, these uh, army generals who would go and uh, they were given specific orders to conquer the land and uh, and also change the culture right now you might say oh that was bad that is uh, you know that is good we might have debate on that but that is what they did right uh, it is sent to change the culture uh, to that of rome right so um, in terms of language culture everything learning uh, they would uh, they would actually bring that in to the place which they conquered so so anyway um, so the apostle is is a sent out one one who goes on a mission in, and uh, and most often it is uh, to to places where uh, which uh, which have not heard the gospel like talking about the church uh, you know it could be a pioneering work uh, and uh, many times we use the word missionary and uh, you know to places where uh, the message has not been heard where the good news has not been heard so uh, to go there and uh, to carry out the work of the gospel uh, so these are uncharted territories um, these are uh, places where uh, you know people have not gone before or it could also mean geographically um, you know like a urban setting it could be a, a group of people which uh, you know uh, Uh, which have not really come uh, you know you you might be in a city you might be in a geographical location like a city where you know everybody there, there is knowledge uh, you know there is access to information and so on but then um, unlocking uh, or releasing a particular strategy and bringing about um, the gospel to that so that could also be uh, you know in, in the modern day the the ministry of the apostle right so uh, apostolos then the second term that we see there is uh, the word prophet um now this we are familiar and uh, we see that a prophet uh, uh, one who speaks as moved by the spirit or does as moved by the spirit one who's filled and inspired by the spirit of god and um, he speaks forth and and does as inspired as led by the spirit of god and it's not just speaking and you know being led to obey the spirit of god but also uh, announcing the moves of god uh to the body of christ um a prophet would also um uh ha- you know in the communication there would be uh the foretelling aspect of it or what is in the future which uh, which god um, which the lord has or the, which the lord knows that he chooses to release to the body of christ or release to uh, even the nations and so on so um so the prophet right so the, the third one we see is the uh evangelist right so evangelist again uh one who uh announces uh, one who or one who carries good tidings um uh, good news and that's the word that we see there eugelistus um he's a carrier of good tidings a carrier of good news um and he brings the good news to the masses and when we when we look at it in the context of the church one who brings the gospel one who shares the gospel Okay. so uh you would see that there will be an overlap between the um you know different offices there will be some aspect of it which which could be an overlap like for example the the apostle apostle obviously is is taking the message of christ to um you know a, a group people group who have not hitherto heard or, and so on but uh, and the evangelist does the same thing so the evangelist um need not necessarily go to an unreached people group but you know he takes it to um, uh, everyone around and that's the ministry office um looking at um, uh, the next one um, just which is the ministry of the pastor okay the ministry gift of the pastor so here um the word used there is the word which um which is used to describe a shepherd or a herdsman one who looks after uh, a flock right 
Uh, so the word used there, uh, poiman or poimane, means uh, a, a herdsman or a shepherd, and one who cares for the flock, who nurtures the flock, um, and who you know who is in charge of the flock and uh, you know, feeding the flock, protecting the flock, and nurturing the flock, and, and so on. So from that's the picture we have of the uh, ministry gift of the shepherd. Okay, and. Uh, we, uh, we see several references uh, to the ministry of the shepherd in the church as well, uh, in the in the scriptures and the other in, uh, Old Testament as well. Right? Then we come to the fifth one, which is the ministry um, office of the uh, teacher. So, didaskalos, uh, which means one who is fitted or equipped to teach, okay? um, to teach, to take people from ignorance to uh, to light, from immaturity to maturity, um, one who grounds people uh, in uh, knowledge uh, and understanding, and so on. So, um, so the teacher uh, in, in the, the ministry of the teacher in the church is the one who teaches, <coughs> excuse me, the things of God and the duties of man, right? the responsibilities of man, the, the things of God. So he's the one who teaches. He or she is the one who teaches, right? So we see that um, you know these are the five uh, ministry gifts that are mentioned here. Um, the, uh, what is typically called the five-fold ministry. Okay, it's like five streams or five folds. Um, and these have been established, given, uh, established in the body of Christ and by the Lord himself. And he gives some, you know, to be this, some to be that, and so on. Right, so we see this. And... Um, so let's look at uh, uh, let's just look at the same verse, and uh, that verse describes why these gifts or why these ministry gifts are placed in the body of Christ. Okay, the purpose of it, and uh, that's uh, that's quite an eye opener as well. Okay, so we see that uh, if you look at verse eleven, uh, verse twelve, sorry, the first thing mentioned there is it's for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Um, which obviously leads to the edifying of the body of Christ. So let's just break that down and uh, look at that. You know, the first one, uh, it's uh, equipping, okay, equipping of uh, the uh, saints. So uh, that's the first one you see. So it's equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. So um, the word equipping, meaning, uh, you know, making fit, you know, it carries the, uh, the idea of uh, training carries the idea of perfecting and uh, fully qualifying someone for uh, for a particular task, right? So it is this fivefold ministry primarily. It's for the equipping of the saints. Now, yes, uh, all of us are commissioned to share the gospel, and that does not, um, you know, that that includes the fivefold ministers as well, where. You know the the commission to preach the gospel, to teach concerning um, all the things that Christ has taught, uh, is there as a as a as a basic given, right? Uh, but specifically here, we see that it is for the equipping of the saints. It is to qualify or train uh, and uh, you know making the fit the saints for the work of ministry. So. Um, Again, I, I know this is a, a simple uh, question that we have already addressed before. So who are the saints, right, really? Who are the, who are the saints? You know, if you are called to equip the saints, who are the saints? Anyone? Everyone who is saved by the blood of Christ. Absolutely. Everyone who is saved by the blood of Christ, Rose um, says, uh, believers of Christ, right? So the word saints, uh, hagiozo, which means, um, yeah, all the believers, which means the ones who are set apart, right? Ones who are consecrated, the ones who are set apart by the blood of Jesus. So uh, it is, it just describes um, uh, a condition, right? If you want to call it that, it just describes something that has happened to a person because he or she uh, came to the saving knowledge of Christ. You know, saved by the blood of Christ, washed by the blood of Christ, being justified, um, set apart for a purpose. Okay, um, so 
um, so the consecrated ones, the ones who are set apart are called saints. Okay, so that, that is something which is very, very basic. Okay, so it's not a title. It's not uh, um, a, a badge of honor given to someone who has achieved a certain level of uh, holiness or giftedness or, you know, uh, or climbed the hierarchy in a church. No, it, 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 that word has been corrupted over the years. But when you look at scripture, uh, when you look at the, the language in which it was written, it is this is what it is, the, it's the set apart ones, the consecrated ones, the sanctified ones. Okay, so uh, all of us uh, believers, we are the same. So now, um, now it, it seems to me, it, it is making sense. Now the, the ministry gift, now you see the uh, apostle, the, the, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Now the Lord has placed them in the body of Christ, uh, the global body of Christ or the local church to equip, to train the saints for what? For what end is the training? And what is the training, um, you know, uh, focusing on um, for the work of ministry? Okay, so again, ministry meaning to serve, ministry to carry out really the commission, the uh, the, the commission. So that's the, uh, yeah, say the word saint is coined from sanctified. Yes, absolutely. So so that's the thing. So the, the fivefold ministers and the fivefold ministries to equip the saints for the work of uh, ministry, right? Now, uh, the second part of it, it says, uh, for the work of ministry, for the edifying or the building up of the body of Christ. So it's for building up, for making strong, um, for making firm and establishing the body of Christ. So it could be a body of believers. It could be a small fellowship. It could be the local church. It could be the church in, you know, in the, in, in the city, like the church of Corinth, church of Ephesus. You know, it could be a, uh, a church of the city, but the ministry exists to to build the body of Christ, to edify the body of Christ, to so to equip the saints so that the saints would do the work of ministry effectively, uh, and to um, bring everyone uh, to the place of being edified, the body of Christ. Okay, then verse thirteen. Okay, verse thirteen says, uh, "Till we all come to the unity of the." faith and of the knowledge of uh, the son of god you know so um, that's interesting so so that uh, the ministry which would involve uh, you know uh, serving the body of christ uh, communicating sharing the heart of god and so on uh, maybe demonstration of power and all that still everyone comes to that place or progresses to uh, the unity of faith so this this ministry gift is going to be in in place it, uh, it is journey, it is in place till everyone comes to the, first of all, the unity of the faith. Uh, then secondly, it says till the knowledge, um, it's unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, um, leading to be a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. To a perfect man, to the measure and stature of the fullness of Christ, and that word there uh, again, um, um, perfect, referring to uh, maturity. Okay, uh, maturity there to a full man, to a mature man, to a mature person rather. So that's the thing that uh, the, uh, the 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 ministry, the serving, and the teaching, and the demonstrating, and living by example to bring people to. Um, to the unity of the faith, uh, to the knowledge of the Son of God, and the knowledge of the Son of God, and to be mature uh, person, you know, to the stature of the fullness of Christ, so Christ likeness, right? So it is. So we 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 get a you know a, a better perspective now. It's it's like okay, it's equipping. Um, it is not just sharing the gospel, but it is uh, equipping the body, equipping the church. Um, you know, if I'm called to be in the fivefold ministry, you know, to equip the church. Uh, 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 and uh, to bring the, the body of believers, uh, it could be one, it could be two, it could be thousands, whatever, you know, to bring the body of believers to uh, the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. So what does that mean? So that means that, <clears throat> uh, you know, bring them to a deeper understanding 
uh, of the faith itself, right? Uh, and to the unity of the faith in the sense that, uh, okay, there, there should, seems to be, you know, different uh, different kinds of beliefs this is because of immaturity, because of wrong doctrine, whatever. But to bring, you know, uh, by all this, by teaching, by, um, by living, by demonstration, to bring to the unity of faith <clears throat> and of the knowledge of the Son of God. Then, um, to a mature person. Okay. Verse 14 talks about it uh, some more. It says that we should no longer be children. Okay. Um, now, what is the difference between child-like and childlike and childish? Anyone? Uh, Pastor, childlike? I Pastor, I'd like to answer. Yep. Um, so childish is is yeah, a ahead, is a well, so basically child to be childish is negative, to be childlike is positive. In what sense? To be childlike is basically to have the heart of a child that receives um that receives things, able to let go of offenses, able to believe without asking any question or trying to um, rationalize things. He just accepts and a heart of love, you know. But for someone who is childish, is someone who basically um, keeps malice, someone who um, who is always easily offended, who picks on little things and never let go, you know. So in this regard, um, basically we are called to be Child, to have a childlike faith, just like Jesus mentioned. But for Paul, when Paul talked about likened us to children, when he was trying to encourage the church to grow, he said we should drop all these childish behaviors. In other words, those things that we ought to let go and then mature, build ourselves mm. up to maturity. Things that let us down or uh, that misrepresent us as children of God. Basically. Right, right. Thank you, thank you, uh, Say. Um, I see all your responses here: In innocence um, uh, versus immaturity. Um, childlike is being obedient to follow the voice of the father, and uh, and also a question here by Avni. Yeah, we'll come. Yeah, we'll come to this. Uh, Avni, we're going to answer that uh, question. Um, so, um, so the thing that we uh, we see is that uh, you know we are called to be. Um, childlike uh, and we, we need to be childlike in our faith we need to be childlike in our trust of god in in our um, you know in our obedience to him uh receiving from the father and having that relationship of love and and so on but not to be childish not to be um immature uh you know sometimes uh, children can be you know unreasonable I kind of discovered that yesterday. Uh, discovered again, rediscovered again yesterday. Right? You know, sometimes children do not obey. You know, I'm just calling out. Oh, come, come! We're gonna have lunch, and just playing, just playing. Just wants to play. Does not want to come to the you know the dining table. And literally, I had to come and say, "Okay, are you coming now?" And uh, you know, uh, talk firmly, and then please come. So uh, we understand that. So. The thing is that we should no longer be or have that kind of a mindset, have that kind of a behavior and attitude. And he goes on to explain, you know, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, so, you know, when we believe also, you know, uh, when we say in our beliefs uh, to be like children, it has a positive and a negative thing, right? So to be mature would mean that, uh, well, I, I receive it and I discern. I receive something and I check um, uh, and I listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I don't miss out on that. Right? I don't uh, override the, the, the caution and the check of the Holy Spirit. Or like the Berians that uh, I would you know go back and see if it is so in the word. Right. So, um, so here, saying that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine. 
actually. So with with every kind of teaching, every wind of uh, teaching um, that seems to seems to be there, that seems to be coming our way, and especially in our day and time with the you know social media and so on, there could be um, you know it, it's it sounds nice and it sounds uh, it's really good, but it it can be a very humanistic. Um, kind of a teaching, it can be a very fleshly kind of a thing, not really spirit-led, uh, and not really in the word, okay? Um, so, uh, need to be discerning, right? Um, but this wind of doctrine, you know, this is, this is the background. It's coming from a source, uh, and this is what it says, by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Okay, so, so this is the thing. Um, uh, so what is the antidote? Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, and from whom the whole body, you know, joined together and knit together uh, and uh, effective working by which every part does its share, uh, grows up and causing growth and edifying of the body. So, um, so that's the thing. So that the antidote is to speak the truth in love, growing up in all things, uh, into him, you know, all things, all areas of our lives into him who is the head, who is the, who is Christ himself. So, so this is the, you know, if, if you, if you look at it, this is the objective or the purpose uh, of the, uh, of the fivefold ministry. Okay. So uh, our next question is, uh, is every single believer called to walk in any of these fivefold ministry and calling of God? Not necessarily, right? So uh, uh, not necessarily because this would be um, the ministry office or the ministry gift um, could be uh, something for some, right? Um, uh, so these need not be uh, like, uh, we're going to look at how the ministry gift is different from the ministry function, uh, and uh, and then we'll get a better understanding, right? So it need not be the fivefold ministry, but we are, you know, like we see in several other places, Romans twelve, um, you know, one Corinthians uh, twelve, like each of us in the body of Christ have a call and have, uh, you know, we we perform a function, and it need not be typical of the fivefold ministry. Right. Uh, it can be leadership. It can be giving. It can be compassion. Uh, there's so many other things. So very uh, diverse, and we could be doing uh, any of that. Right. Okay. Um, hope that. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Okay. So, um, so we let's. Uh, any 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 other questions here um, based on what we just looked at? Um, so some more uh, some more uh, conclusions that we can come to when we when we read this uh, scripture. Some more learnings is that well, it's a divine call. Okay, first of all, it's not somebody's idea. It's not that somebody looked at the ministry gift and say, "Oh, wow, this is wonderful." I see the wonderful way in which uh, this person is preaching or doing these things, and I want to be like that. And it's it's well, it's it's good to have aspiration. It's good to desire, but then. Uh, ultimately, the Lord decides, right? And we're, we're talking specifically about the uh, fivefold ministry uh, gift, right? So uh, I remember once uh, just listening to one of these preachers and how articulate this person was. I was very, I was very young uh, person, a young boy. So, um, and then I was like really taken up by that. And I thought ministry was just that, of course, you know, I, I, I want to be a, you know, by, be an evangelist because this person was so cool, you know, he was, he was very interested in photography and he was very articulate and he was teaching. And so, you know, so I'm just saying that it, it need not, it, it is not like that, right? While we desire to serve God, um, let God really you know, put us in these places. Well, these desires will grow, you know, and uh, to look at it in a positive way, well, well, uh, the, the, these desires will grow. Right? God is, you know, every time I see people, I, I want to share the good news. And and this is what uh, he's, maybe he's uh, training me and he's bringing me to a place and he wants to use me in that way. Praise God. Uh, you know, but the thing is that it is a divine call. We understand that. Um well, having said that, you know, I, I, I just want us to, uh, you know, sometimes we, we are just sitting and waiting for the call. And we're saying, okay, when will the phone ring? Um, you know, uh, I, I just want, uh, I don't know, I just want to be sure. And, uh, and you know, well, nothing wrong in being sure, nothing wrong in wanting to know. But, 
the, the best thing is to start serving right? start ministering start serving wherever we are and uh, you know whichever uh, church we are part of whatever opportunities are there you know, right to really start serving and let god um you know he will he will do the course correction he will do the he will do the guiding he'll bring us into uh, our place you know and pretty soon we we may not even realize it we'll find ourselves walking in the middle of it and then suddenly you realize wow you know um, so or the route could be very different god says you know this is it okay like uh, okay i see maybe you know, prabhakar or abhishek you know i'm calling you today to this okay and uh, you know it's a very defining moment and you know god has spoken and uh, uh, and then you you know and then you know you begin that path of preparing towards it and being commissioned by god at the right time so yeah so the thing is uh, like uh, absolutely say you know god those who calls those who are already serving uh, uh, the, the the thing is that you already have a heart you know you 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 having that relationship with god you have walking with god and yes definitely uh, a moving vehicle is easier to stir uh, as we would have you know all of us would have uh, experienced if it's stationary it's difficult to stir and it's not going anywhere but if it's moving then it's definitely easy to stir and guide and so on so yeah so uh, it's a divine call but the call of god need not be like i'm sitting and waiting and suddenly it hits me but you know as i'm walking with him so everything else need not come to a standstill when we are waiting for the call of god right sometimes it happens i'm just waiting uh, and years go by you know the most uh, you know uh, valuable resource that we have is time and then you suddenly realize that a huge chunk of time has just gone by right so uh, so thing is to you know keep keep moving keep walking keep uh, serving god right okay so it's a divine call uh, we understand that uh, it's from him and uh, it's something that is uh, that could be resident within us and uh, because god knows god plans god knows uh, the end from the beginning and he's already put it in us uh, as the spirit of god comes and indwells us and it could be stirred up uh, and uh, like we like we see uh, Uh, Paul talking to Timothy and he says you know that gift of god that was uh, imparted uh, by the laying on of hands you know something that was there that was stirred up so it could it could happen that way as well um so uh, it's a, it's a gift that is imparted that is resident and uh, and we see that uh, this these gifts in a way represent uh, the ministry of the lord to the church the ministry of the lord to the body of christ in equipping in revealing in teaching in grounding the people in caring for in in feeding in uh, in healing the wounds and uh, bringing us to wholeness so it represents christ um ministry to the church as well right? to the body as well so uh, the representation of christ ministry to the body okay so um it it could be it could it represent that as well so we see that um so this uh, we see in another place that is 1 corinthians 12 uh, verse 28 where paul asks the the rhetoric question right where he's talking about the gifts now uh, 1 corinthians 12 um and he's talking about the body and he's talking about the gifts and uh, and then uh, there also you know the the ministry gifts are mentioned there but um but not as clearly as ephesians 4 but you see the unfolding of the gifts when we read uh, um 1 corinthians 12 and verse 28 of course we we looked at it uh, during our holy spirit class in the first year first semester um uh let's just read that again 1 corinthians 12 and verse 28 31 god has appointed these in the church first apostles second prophets third teachers after that miracles then gifts of healings helps administrations and varieties of tongues okay um so is there a pattern here is there something that is mentioned here about the fivefold uh ministry yes we see um apostle we see prophets we see teachers and this is how it actually unfolded in the early church uh, in the church when uh, yeah, yeah let me okay mangi asks a question mangi just one minute let me just finish this so we see this unfolding there 
And then Paul asked me that question, are all apostles, right? And which, which ties in with Ephesians 4, where it says, and he gave some to be apostles. He gave some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and so on. So here, you know, uh, so Paul is asking, all, all prophets are all teachers, and, and so on. So when we look at miracles and healings, you know, these are uh, what we would say, uh, we see this in the ministry of the evangelist that God choosing to use the ministry gift of the evangelist primarily in this. Right? When the gospel is brought, when the gospel is shared with the demonstrations of power, with the demonstrations of healing, with the demonstrations of uh, miracles and so on. So we we could infer right, that uh, the gifts of healings and miracles are referring to the office of the evangelist. And then we also see uh, helps, administrations, uh, and so on. So helps and administrations, which are really, if you if you look at people uh, with the pastoral uh, calling or pastoral gift, and these are part and parcel of that, right? Uh, helps, administrations. Okay, so so we 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 see a parallel here uh, as well. Okay, let's look at uh, uh, Mangi's question. Let's hear. Yes, Mangi. Um, just go, when you you were reading that verse, verse twenty eight, uh, mm -hmm. you have the gift of healing, helps, administration, and variety of times. So, in this, in I just want to to know to ask, the gift of tangia is it the speaking in tongue or it's the gift of speaking in different languages so that uh, the gospel may uh, advance because we we confuse uh, talking in tongue and the gift of tongues so if you may yeah. clar you can clarify that should yeah. help yeah. thank you so sir. when we um, yeah sure sure Mike. so when we look at tongues we see that um, of course we looked at it earlier but then when we look at it we see that it could be earthly language or it could be a heavenly language it could be a known language, um, like we see in the book of Acts and uh, chapter 2, and we see that uh, when, when, when people started speaking out in tongues, there they were others from other nations who were there who had come uh, for the Feast of uh, Pentecost and so on. So they, they heard for the Feast of First Fruits, and, uh, and then they, they heard uh, uh, people declaring the praises of God in their own language, right? So it could be a, a earthly language. Uh, at the same time, it could also be an un, unknown language. It could be a heavenly language, right? So uh, how do we say that? In the same uh, in the same book, one Corinthians twelve. Um, if you go to the chapter thirteen, uh, where uh, Paul Paul is again, you know, he's establishing the fact uh, the usage of gifts and so on to the church. Um, so in verse 13 sorry chapter 13 uh, he talks about love and there the very first chapter he says though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love i have become a sounding brass or clanging symbol so um so this is one reference that we see that it could be an earthly language which people understand or it could be a heavenly language which uh, you know, people may not understand because it's not from this planet at all. Uh, but also, when we go to uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and uh, verse 2, is, it talks about, uh, for he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. Right? So there is no understanding of the language that one is speaking, but in the spirit, the person is actually speaking mysteries. Um, and again, uh, verse 4, chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 4, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. So, yeah, so it could be earthly language, it could be a heavenly language as well. And another uh, reference to go to is, again, Romans chapter 8, where you see that uh, the spirit making intercession with groanings, which cannot be uttered, uh, referring to, you know, uh, inarticulate speech, right? So, um, which are enabled by the spirit again. Um, let me just give you that reference. I think it's Romans. Um, um, just a minute, Romans. Yeah, uh, Romans uh, 5, sorry. Um, 
Romans chapter 5. And um, oh, no, that's, that, that's above the lower part. So I think it's Romans 8 only. Mm. Yeah, so Romans 8 and uh, verse 26. Um, Romans, uh, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that uh, that Greek rendition there is that groanings which cannot be uttered in an articulate speech. Um, so, yeah, so we see all these uh, different scriptures. Um, so we, which um, point to the fact that it could be, uh, you know, a language, a earthly language, or it could be a heavenly language as well. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. All right, Maggie. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chris. You have a question. Uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, the gospel is a fivefold ministry. Yeah. Uh, so, as I understand. Um, uh, the the apostle um, uh, ministry is is already yeah, I mean it's something that has already happened in the past happened in the past and since it was it is actually being given to the uh, you know the the twelve disciples of Jesus and a few others like like Paul mm -hmm. and it's not something that would be um, you know something that you know we as believers would would uh, would necessarily need to attain to because we won't be able to do it. Um, mm -hmm. The other, the other one is uh, the other question I have is around uh, uh, profit. Uh, so there's, there's also, you know, some, um, you know, uh, discussion about, you know, that these the prophets, like you know, in the Old Testament and uh, some in the New Testament, uh, they were very sort of, you know, focused on a certain specific um, uh, objective, uh, as well as a certain, you know, um, you know geographic uh, area. Right. So uh, again. Uh, I don't know if that still applies, to, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the current age. So I just wanted to get your view on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, one is about the apostles. Uh, when you look at the apostles, of course, uh, we have the twelve apostles of the Lamb, the ones who worked with Jesus. Uh, we have Apostle, um, you know, uh, Paul, who established Scripture. So these are the founding apostles whom the Lord used to, you know, um, establish Scripture, write Scripture, uh, uh, and so on. So, um, of course, there is that is different from the apostles, uh, the apostolic ministry that the Lord establishes in in the church. So we the 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 term is the same. Uh, the function is not to establish or uh, uh, how do I put it? Not uh, establish scripture or new doctrine uh, or new scripture because it's already been done. Um, but now it is um, it is to be commissioned to open up new territories and to uh, do pioneering work and uh, and so on. Now, when you look at Ro Romans, the book of Romans, the last chapter, you you see a couple, you know Paul actually greeting a lot of people and so on. So there he mentions, uh, you know, verse seven, Romans sixteen, verse seven. He's, he talks about Andronicus and Junia. My country, he says, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, uh, who also were in Christ before me, and so on. So, um, and also Barnabas is also referred to as uh, an apostle. Um, so we see that, um, like. Uh, so the, the apostolic ministry is different, right? So, so even today's today uh, day and time, uh, while we may not really, uh, maybe in some you know some parts of the world, we're not using the uh, parts of the church or parts of the world where the church is. We're not using these terms, but the fact is that um, there are people walking in that apostolic office, you know, um, you know, unlocking territories for the kingdom of God. Uh, doing very unusual and uh, new uh, new things, uh, which are which are bringing people uh, people group uh, to the knowledge of Christ. Right? So the apostolic ministry is very much there uh, in today's ch uh, church. So yes, like you said, there are different categories of apostles, which you will um, of course we we'll look you look at it in great detail when you look at the apostolic and uh, prophetic ministry. Uh, with regard to the prophets, again. Like, like we studied the gifts, you know, there is the simple gift of gift of prophecy, prof, uh, prophecy, sorry, that which brings in edification, exhortation, and comfort, which are for all people. And there are 
prophesying believers, where believers as um, placed in the uh, body of Christ, um, they move regularly in the gift of prophecy. That's how God uses them. They bring in our word, they bring a word of edification, exhortation and comfort as they minister to one another and so on. Right. And the and of course the the prophetic gift like and you, like you rightly said okay god uses used uh, you know the prophets of old uh, about uh, you know to uh, to a specific nation uh, to a ge geographical territory and so on well the same thing is uh, is true of today also that they announce the moves of god and god gives them uh, an authority and a sphere of influence uh, over nation or nations where it could be a geographical nation or it could be a you know a ethne or ethnos or a people group where God uh, uses them uh, to bring a now word uh, and so on. So the prophetic office uh, is for today's church as well. Does that help, Chris? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, um, do you have any examples of, of apostles in, in the current time or, uh, you know, or in, the, in this, maybe in the, in the last century? Or um, yeah, so the ap apostle... Uh, well, I would, um, you know, um, when when I look at Pastor Ashish, okay, uh, uh, very very apostolic in the sense, uh, in terms of uh, new initiatives, in terms of opening up new things, uh, building things where things were not there, you know, this whole Bible College online things, you know, um, uh, very quickly, uh, very rapidly, bringing it to where it is right now. Um, and then we've done some very unusual, you know, ministry work as well, you know, uh, while the church, it, church is not a very big church, um, but God has blessed and God has been faithful. And so, uh, you know, doing some ministry work in the north of India, some schools of ministry and so on, where, um, so, uh, you know, we see that um, God using him in that manner. And, you know, the way it's, uh, the way it started really, when he was actually in um, running his own software business, and at the same time, you know, doing the ministry and so on. So we see that, uh, you know that apostolic thing it, it was it was at a time when not many people were in that kind of a thing you know it was like okay if it's a full time ministry i need to resign and go uh you know give everything off and go but then you see uh, examples of daniel joseph and all those god used you know uh, statesmen really who uh, or you would say today's uh, you know ias officers and uh, uh, god used you know so there is a babe so we, we see that happening and um, yeah, several other things. So uh, that is one example where you see the apostolic and uh, that I can think of, which is really, you know, close home, closer to home. Okay, thank you. Right, Chris. Okay, so we'll take a break. I think we're five minutes into our break time. So we'll take a 10-minute break. We come back at 11.05. Okay, thank you.